facilitators of dedication. Our objective, number one, is to understand the danger that face, that confront dedication to God. That's our first object. Dangers, the dangers that confront our dedication to God. And then, to understand number two, the factors that will facilitate our dedication to God. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. The Bible says, Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Examine your own self whether you are still in the faith. That means somebody can stop being in the faith and not be aware. Examine your own self. Prove your own self. The reason why he said we should examine ourselves is because we live in a world today where dedication to God is in great danger. We live in a world today where passion for God is in danger. We live in a world today We have passionate people are almost becoming like an endangered species. And I will give you five reasons why your dedication to God must be guarded. Reason number one. We live in a world. That is. Overwhelmed. With an abundance of iniquity. A world that is overwhelmed with an abundance of iniquity and the abundance of iniquity is the suffocation of spirituality the abundance of iniquity at times could be the suffocation of spirituality Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 says and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So we live in a world today that is overwhelmed with an abundance of iniquity. We are in the world today where People expect you to do what they do and they are shocked if you are surprised. For example, you went to the market to buy something or the shop to buy something for your organization and the salesperson is asking you how much should I write on the receipt? 
Or should I give you an empty receipt? So that you can write whatever prize you want. That's the kind of world we live in. The abundance of iniquity. We are places in the world today where there are laws that protect iniquity. So, on the basis of that, dedication is in danger. We have the fact that you are not doing what others want to do, even puts you in danger. Number two, we live in a world today that is saturated with an epidemic of scoffers and blasphemers. There is an epidemic of scoffers and blasphemers. Those who scoff at everything, who mock at everything. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible said this no all that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers, blasphemers. They blaspheme everything. Then 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3. He said, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Walking after their own lust. That is talking about mockers, blasphemers. Those who scoff at everything, they mock at everything. Those whose assignment is to tell the world that every pastor is a thief. Every preacher is preaching for the sake of money. No use to go to church. You see such an epidemic online, social media, everywhere. There are people that is the sole basis of their existence. To show that nobody is right and nothing is correct. And the sad thing is that there are gullible souls. Who are distracted unto damnation. You see everything is in the Bible. It's an epidemic of scoffers. Epidemic of blasphemers. Epidemic. There. Thirdly. We live in a world. With an escalation. Of worldly pleasures and attractions. Worldly pleasures and attractions. Entertainment things. Pleasurable things. That take people's attention and focus. Literally of God. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 4 again. Men shall be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. We have the internet. We have the social media. We have video games that can engage you for four hours or more. It's possible to chat, 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 chat on all the platforms, maybe for three, four, five, six hours, non-stop. It's possible to watch a movie, part one is three hours, part two is three hours, part three is three hours. That's nine hours. Enough things to keep people busy and reduce the time for prayer, time for study of the world, time for fasting, time for meaningful relationship with God. We live in such a world today. Am I communicating? You know that in developed worlds, there are people who lost their jobs because they spent too much time on the internet doing rubbish. They lost their jobs. So we live in such a world today. Where people are taking hours to do things. That does not add anything to their spiritual life. At the detriment 
of their spiritual life. Number four, we live in a world today with increasing anti-Christian and anti-godly sentiments and agenda. A world today that is saturated with increasing anti-Christian and anti-godly sentiments and agenda. The anti-Christ agenda is on the increase. Anti-God agenda is on the increase. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 18. He said, Sorry, 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. He said there are many antichrists in the world. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, that antichrist shall come. Even now, are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. So we are, in the last days, there will be a lot of anti-Christian sentiments, anti-Christ sentiments, anti-God emotions. The world is trying to convince the world that there is no need for God and no need for church. Yesterday, someone sent me from America. I think a legislation that was concluded. I think it was in New York City that it is legal to perform abortion. That is legal to perform abortion at any month of pregnancy. That is the pregnancy is nine months and the woman walks into the place and says, I want an abortion, go ahead and take it out. Now listen to the implication. The implication is not what the person walks in to say, I want to do. The implication is when he walks into a Christian born again, tongue-talking government doctor or walking any doctor at all. And he said, I want an abortion for this nine months pregnancy. And the Christians say, no, it's against my faith. Then they said, no, you are against the law. That is where the challenge, the challenge lies. The case recently where two people walked to a cake baker, two men, and they said, they want the cake baked for their, for their wedding, homosexuals. They want to wear it. And the cake baker is a Christian. They said, no. I can't bake cake for you or two men to get married. And they took him to court. They took the person to court. From the high court to the higher court, all the way to the Supreme Court. Okay. So we live in such a, a world that is increasingly getting hostile. Am I communicating? How many of you know there are some people your relationship with them might be normal until they know how deep you are with God. Then they get angry. Then they just get angry. I was sitting in the aircraft with a man some time, some years ago, coming from Wari to Abuja. He's a white man. We sat together talking, gisting. Oh, what do you do? I'm a medical doctor. So we we're talking. The moment I mentioned that I'm a pastor and I'm this and that, I'm born again. His face changed. That was the end of our discussion. He faced his front and I, and, and I faced my front. My offense was that I, I am a Christian and I'm a pastor. I even told him we pray for the sick and they get healed. He got angry. In Europe it is plenty. Anti-Christian, anti-God sentiment. My communication. So, so at, in a time like this, dedication to God is getting in danger. That is point number four. And number five, we live in a world. All right, I'll stop at number four. Anti God sentiments. What do you do to keep your dedication to God intact? Again, I said, we live in a world that is overrun and overwhelmed with abundance of iniquity. A world with an epidemic of scoffers and blasphemers. We live in a world with an escalation of worldly pleasures and attractions. 
And then, of course, anti Christian and anti godly sentiments and agenda. What do you do to remain as ferocious as the apostles? As, as brutal as, 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 the, as, as, as the apostles? What do we do? Number one, maintain a clear conscience. Maintain a clear conscience. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 and verse 19. He said, now, nah, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith on faith. But verse 19 is very important. Holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning the faith they have made shipwreck what is the meaning of that when your conscience is clear your dedication will be in place But when your conscience is bad, your dedication is in danger. Iniquity attracts, iniquity attacks spirituality. Sin. Keeps you from God. And God keeps you from sin. That is why most unbelievers don't like to come to church. Because they are conscious, they don't want anything to prick them. That is why even some people look at you and they get angry. Because your integrity is a challenge to their iniquity. Your discipline rebukes their carelessness. Your comportment re rebukes their compromise. So they are angry when they see you. Every time you appear without preaching, they are convicted. Am I communicating? In the book of First Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 1, he said, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Next verse. All right. They have their conscience seared with the hot iron. When the conscience has become burnt, People depart from the faith. Is God speaking to somebody here? So what is the key? Determine to maintain a tender conscience. Don't live in sin. Be quick to ask God for mercy. Don't ever get tired of asking him for mercy. And don't ever remain at the point where you have to keep on asking him all the time. Just ensure you are tender. Your heart is tender. Your conscience is tender. The way you used to feel when you did the wrong thing in those days, let it remain like that. By maintaining the tenderness of conscience, never get used to doing wrong. Otherwise, the time comes when your conscience becomes hardened. And you are in danger and you are not aware. And you are far from God, far from church, far from prayer, far from study of the world. It begins when the conscience is no longer clear. Number one, maintain a clear conscience. Number two, 
maintain the flow of the spirit. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. He said, and hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 to 7. He said, I put you in remembrance that you stay up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hand. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What does that scripture say? Two passages are saying the same thing. That the spirit of God is the spirit of love. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love. What is the meaning of that? Every time you exercise yourself in the Holy Spirit, you saturate your heart with love. Love for God. Passion for God is intensified with exercise in the spirit. Let kosher. Speaking in tongues is not just a prayer language. It keeps the love of God on fire in your heart. On fire. Love for God. Passion for God is kept alive as you pray in the Holy Spirit. I have been praying in the Holy Spirit for 23 years and I have not reduced in the intensity of it. And those who knew us many, many years ago, I say 23 years, 33 years. 33 years. And those who knew us many, many years ago, they, they know that the fire then is still the fire now. The same. Maybe with some higher intensity. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Maintain the flow of the Spirit. It will keep the love of God af afresh, a glow, a fire. It will keep your, fa your passion on. It will maintain the heat of your spirit. Maintain the flow of the spirit. Number three, maintain the right company. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Maintain the right company. That was Proverbs 13 and in verse 20. And Proverbs chapter 15 verse 33. Evil communication corrupted good manners. First Corinthians 15, 33. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Be not deceived. That was First Corinthians 15, 23. It is iron that sharpens iron. Eagles move with eagles. In a big house, there are many vessels. We are all brethren, but not everybody has the same level of passion. Am I communicating? Your association should be determined by passion and conviction. It is those who carry your passion and carry your conviction that can accommodate your association. Those who carry your passion. They feel what you feel. What moves you move them. They think revolution. You think revolution. Those are the things that. Those are the people that can accommodate. Your association. For those who are not yet married. The truth of the matter is. It's not everybody you can marry. It's not even everybody in church you can marry. Not that something is wrong with them. Not that they are bad. It is just that the intensity of what you carry, they can't accommodate it. For example, as I am now, how would it have been if I had married somebody 
Who has no business with ministry or calling? Who is not interested in anything? But when next shall we go to Dubai? When next shall we go to Paris? I have visas that expire. Doesn't matter what country. Whether it's America or UK or anything. If work at home keeps me, it expires. First time I got European visa for 30, how many countries? It expired. I had no time to travel. My communicator. You got a born again, Holy Ghost filled person. But who doesn't have passion for ministry? Passion for call of God, passion for where you are going, then you are dragged back not that the person you married is going to hell it's just that antelope cannot run hospice are you hearing what I'm saying here today there is a speed of the antelope and there is the speed of, of, the, of the horse and there is the speed of the cheetah Very, very important. There are people who unnecessarily frustrate their own lives. By the wrongness of association. In business, you, you, you identify who you can associate with in, in your career, in your destiny. Maintain the right association. Let me tell you, I am one of those who believe that it is better to walk alone than to walk with the wrong company. I believe that, that it is better to walk alone while you trust God for the right company than to manage the wrong association. Because the wrong association can cause a damage that you might take a lifetime to repair. Somebody say amen. amen. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? Just try your best. Try your best. Maintain the right association. And let me add this. Add, add this. If you have a good association that suddenly decide to derail, don't derail with them. When people who you it doesn't matter if they decided to miss road. Don't miss road with them. You are not born into the same into this world at the same time and the same conception with anybody. Even if you are twins, twins go in different directions. I've seen twins who are identical twins but opposite in every way. You didn't hear what I just said. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? I've seen products of the same conception, the same mother, the same father, opposite in every way. What are you talking about? As we talk about the right association, I have, I have had friends that we have known each other for 30 something years. Who we are, we couldn't be in proximity because of differences in, in principle. Belief changed, oppression changed. That is the reason for junctions. So that people can take different roads. Hey! Hey! Look at your neighbor. Say that is the purpose of junctions. So that people can take different directions. Depending on their destination. And their desires. Take your seat. It is, it is at the junction that road divide. Maintain the right company. Don't derail with anybody derailing. Don't miss road. With anybody missing road. The worst thing that can happen to anybody is, to, is not to know what you want out of life. That was number three. Number four. Maintain the fellowship of the brethren. Maintain the fellowship of the brethren. The fellowship of the brethren is weapon. 
against the distractions of life. The fellowship of the brethren. You know what Paul the Apostle said in Hebrews chapter 10 and in verse 25 and 26. He said that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner, the character of some is. Don't forsake the assembly. He said, but exhort one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, so when we forsake the assembly of ourselves together, the tendency to derail is easy. Anybody who grew in the village, you know that to make fire with firewood, you bring many woods together. Am I communicating? The moment you pull one wood out of the fire, what happens to that one wood? The fire dies. Your fire is maintained in association with other fires. When you remove that one wood, the fire dies. There are so many people whose fire died because they think that they can do without the fellowship. Oh, I have the Bible, I can study, I can watch Christian television, I can do this, I can pray in the spirit, I can do that. No. God, who knows that you can have access to all those things, still said, don't forsake their physical assembly. Don't let Christian television destroy your spiritual life. Why are we broadcasting? For those who can't come to church like this. And for those who for one reason or the other are held back. But if you can, don't let TV, internet, or anything. Don't let internet pastor you as where possible. Where you can get the physical gathering of the people. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Am I communicating at all? Say amen. Is anybody following anything at all? You know the strength of the broom is in the collection together of broomsticks. Carry one broomstick. How easy is it to break? Any day. Carry a bunch of broom and try to break it all together at once. As feeble as they are, together they are indestructible. Am I communicating? Your strength is in the unity with the brethren. It's in unity and unison with the brethren. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before the Lord. Somebody say amen. I've told you before that in the university, many young men, you see, people who are in the academic environment at times, they like to experiment with a lot of things. I know God is not in the church anymore. God has forsaken the church. Church is this, church is that. that. Many people are doing it now who are not even in the university. No need to go to church. Pastors are this and that. And the people step out of church. One by one by one by one. At that time, some people ran mad. Some people exploded in immorality. All manner of things. Today we don't know their address. We don't know their location globally. Because they felt they were too big for the church. Never you do so. Anywhere you go in the world, find the church, godly church to worship. And I tell people, one of, our, of, our, one of us wanted to travel and, and I said, no, you don't travel on a Sunday morning, attend church, and then you can travel if possible after the service or something. Let's give God that honor. You know, when they follow the, the Jewish law, the Sabbath law, it was exactly 24 hours. The Jews would do nothing for 24 hours from the evening of Friday until Sunday morning. They wouldn't do. They can't even press the lift. When we went to Israel, it was a Sabbath kind of holiday and other people have to do it if, if they were there. The major hotels have automatically, they couldn't even press the light bulb that their laws say they shouldn't work on Sabbath. <laughs> am I communicating at all and so this is the point of the matter maintain 
fellowship with the brethren. And finally, maintain spiritual accountability. Be accountable. Maintain spiritual accountability. Be accountable. Let somebody, at least one person in the world, be able to call you to order. Let somebody, at least let there be someone, somewhere, that you are answerable to, accountable to. Never come to the point where you are right and everybody is wrong. Never come to the point where everybody who should help you has a fault. That is where the devil set people up for destruction. Elisha followed Elijah despite the mannerisms of Elijah that was not necessarily sinful, but he had mannerisms. But Elisha knew that was the man for him. Over his life. Never come to the point where everybody is wrong and you are right. It is highway to disaster. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. The Bible said. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. You need a prophet, a pastor, an apostle. Whoever God places over your life. That brings you out of your captivity, out of your Egypt, out of your sin or your iniquity or your guilt. And you need pro prophetic covering for the preservation of your spiritual life, the preservation of your destiny. You need it. Someone say, Amen. We have a generation today. The Bible says, the signs of the end time, they will be rebellious, they will be heady, high minded. Disobedient to parents. You are not in that category. Can somebody say a louder amen? I knew a man many, many, many years ago. A white man. God anointed him, used him so much. Power, hand. This man moved in mighty signs and wonders. Suddenly, he began to come against everybody. He didn't spare Kenneth Hagen. He called him a cult. Didn't spare or a robot. Didn't spare Young Gicho. Everybody was under his blow. He had a private aircraft then, 30 something years ago. The church was 11,000, I think 200. By the time he continued at such a frequency, God withdrew his health. Withdrew his hand. Since you are right and everybody is wrong, crash. He crashed to zero. He's alive today, but nothing much to zero. Never you. I have somebody who says to me, Come now. And I say, I'm on my way, sir. Is God speaking to somebody here? And I am on my way. We had a Christian association of Nigeria a can meeting the other day at the ecumenical center. And after we finished the meeting, it wasn't a big, big meeting. The can national president was there. Others were there. And one of the officers said, I want to welcome uh, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche um, for finding the time to be in our midst in this small meeting here today. He said, if it is some people, since... Um, God has helped you. You have built something very, very big and those kind of things. You don't have time for anything small. I say to the, I say to the are hearing what? God forbid. I said God forbid that day will never come. And I told them for your information, if you have a Christian Association of Nigerians national or global meeting that you need a venue big enough to hold it. This place is available. Doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. God forbid. My father and the Lord asked me, he said, where are you? I said, it depends on where you want me to be.
He said, can you be on your way to Lagos now? I'm on the road already. Am I competing? Let me tell you a funny story. And then I'll end there. When I was in the university, there was a young man that God helped us to lead to Christ. And got him, just helped him, assisted him. Also a medical student at that time. After a while, we could, I couldn't understand his move anymore. He decided to follow up his sister. But the follow up was looking somehow. Where they will be in the same room praying together for about three, four, five, six hours. Okay, three, four hours, let's say. I said, brother, what is happening? He said to me, you see, when eagles are operating, vultures cannot understand them. Me. Who? <laughs> me who helped you brought you up spiritually I am vulture you are ego I come down I didn't say anything the, the egos continue manifesting suddenly the girl started changing she became fairer countenance was just looking somehow and I said to the sister, what's happening? You are looking very plump. He said, it's the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Nobody was aware, sir. Nobody was aware this girl was pregnant from ego manifestation. The father was a professor. Listen, it's a very serious story. I don't know how they covered the thing until the girl, nine months later, she says she has stomach pain. Father took her to the hospital and the doctors looked at her and made her say, are you the, is it your wife? Where are baby things? The prof nearly fainted. Baby what? Later on, that, that man, that father or that girl met me and said, all of you are aware of what was going on. You didn't tell me anything. I said, I'm not aware of nothing, sir. Our best. He was very furious. Ego. Ego manifestation that has no respect for pastoring. You, you will not be that kind of ego. Stand up on your feet. You will never be that kind of ego. Hallelujah. Without a doubt, no matter how big you are, never be too big to be pastor. To be under a prophetic, a spiritual covering. You cannot say there is nobody in the world who cannot speak into your life or call you to order. Jesus as big as he was. He submitted himself to the authority of John the Baptist. He said, suffer it to be so for now. For he becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. If to John the Baptist, how anointed are you compared to Jesus? Nobody can pastor you. Please put these five points in place and safeguard your spiritual destiny. Say amen. Lift up your hands and let us speak to God. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Give him the adoration. Give him the adoration. Give him the adoration. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift your hands after me and say, Father, thank you for your word. To me tonight, I receive your word to change my life to change my story to change my destiny in the name of Jesus I receive the grace to maintain spiritual accountability I receive the grace to maintain the fellowship 
of the brethren I receive the grace to maintain the right company I receive the grace to maintain the flow of the spirit I receive the grace Lord to maintain a clear conscience I receive that grace Lord in the name of Jesus be up standing open your mouth and speak to God I receive that grace 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 lift your voice and speak to God I receive that grace I receive that grace Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. The grace to maintain the clarity of conscience. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace. In the name of Jesus. <laughs>